Today's video is going to be over section 9-7, which is called Solving Quadratic Equations by Using Square Roots. Um, well, not entirely, because there is one type of problem I left out of section 9-6. I um, actually did the video before I figured out what I wanted the homework to be, and I wasn't going to go back and reshoot the video. I figured I'd just tack it onto this one, so... You're going to get a little bit of section 9 6, um, a little bit more of section 9 6, I should say, followed up by section 9 7. So, uh, this is the type of problem that I didn't do. We have x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. And I'm going to spare you the whole, uh, hey, let's see if it's this, it's this, it's this. It's, it's a perfect square trinomial. So, that perfect square trinomial will factor into x plus 3, the quantity squared, equals 0. So now what you want to do is take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of anything squared is just itself. So that would be x plus 3, and then the square root of 0 is 0. Right? So just kind of as a more simple version, if I took the square root of x squared, oh, let's shut off that would equal x. So if I take the square root of a quantity squared, it's just going to be that quantity. And then subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x is negative 3. So we find out, oh, I hope this doesn't do this the whole time, uh, we find out that if it's a perfect square trinomial, instead of having two solutions like we did in the last video, we simply have one solution. Okay, remember, quadratics can have two solutions, one solution, or no solution. Or they can, you know, it's the same as me saying they can have two zeros, one zero, or no zeros. Because remember, zeros and solutions are the same thing. Just like uh, x-intercepts are the same thing as well. So it can have two of them, one of them, or none of them. Uh, let's show that that's the solution. So I'll plug in negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 9, and that's equal to 0. Square negative 3, you get positive 9. Positive times a negative is a negative, plus 9. 9 and 9 make 18. 18 minus 18 is 0 equals 0. So that is the one and only solution. All right. Um, the graph of that doesn't really stand out, but this is the x-axis, so you can see it just touches the x-axis one time at negative 3, so that means it only has that one solution. Alright, we'll do one more of those. Again, this is going to be a perfect square trinomial. Right, take the square root of the first, you get 5x. Take the square root of the last one, you get 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Double it, you get 20. Right, so still that sign. Put it squared. Now that's equal to 0. Go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So I get 5x minus 2 equals 0. 5x equals 2. Divide that by 5, and x is 2 fifths. Hopefully that's not down in the blurry zone there. x is 2 fifths. Remember, 2 fifths as a decimal is 0.4. I only bring that up because um, when I show the slide with the graph, instead of saying 2 fifths, it says 0.4. So. Okay. So let's throw that back in. Now again, on a homework assignment, this is all you would need to do. You don't necessarily have to do this next slide, um, the work on this next slide. I just like showing you that it works. So, um, so we have 25 times 2 fifths squared minus 20 times 2 fifths plus 4, and that equals 0. So 25 times 4 25ths minus 
20 divided by 5 is 4 times 2 is 8. Put that over 1 and the 25's cancel. So I have 4 minus 8 plus 4 equals 0, 0 equals 0. So again, I have shown that that's my only solution. I'm trying to block the glare. I don't really know where the glare is. Maybe you're in there somewhere. Alright, so that's the only uh, two examples I'm going to do that I left out of section 9.6. Uh, so we're going to bump into section 9.7. I guess I need to show you the graph here. Now, this one is a very, very skinny parabola. Hopefully we remember from section 9.4 that the bigger that number is, the more narrow it gets. So this one is very narrow. But you can see right here it says 0 0.4. So that is our one solution. All right, section 9.7, uh, as that says, this is easy, 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 easy. All right, we're going to use uh, square roots to solve these. Okay. Um, so at first, what you might be tempted to do with a problem like this is say, well, that factors into x plus 4, x minus 4 equals 0. And then like we did in section 9.6, set each of those factors equal to zero and solve. This one you would get x is negative four, x is positive four. As easy as that, as that is, we can do it a different way that's even easier. So instead of doing that simple, simple work, what I would do instead if I were you Simply transpose that over, that becomes positive 16. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And remember, when you take the square root of a number, it has both a negative root and a positive root. So this ends up being plus or minus 4, meaning negative 4 and positive 4. I would do it this way. That's what that section is called using square roots to solve the quadratic equation. Now, if I take negative four and square it, I get 16. If I take positive four and square it, I get 16. So I'm not gonna show, I'm not gonna do both of these because other than substitution, all the work is exactly the same. So for this first one, I'll just substitute in negative 4. Okay, what I'm saying is if I put positive 4 and squared it, I'd get 16 right here. Negative 4 squared is 16. So I just get 16 minus 16 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Okay. If I erase that negative, all the work after it's the same. So both negative 4 and positive 4 are solutions to that quadratic. <clears throat> so if we look at the graph, that graph is super zoomed out because the x-intercept, or the uh, y-intercept is so so low compared to uh, the x-axis, but um, you probably can't see that if you're just watching the video, but that says negative four zero and that says four zero. So there are our two solutions. Um, we have negative x squared plus 4 equals 0. So what I would do this time, instead of transposing the 4 over, transpose the negative x squared over, and that will go over as positive x squared. Take the square root of both sides, plus or minus 2 equals x. Again, you can leave your answer like that, but just remember that means x equals negative 2, and it also means x equals positive 2. Okay, you don't have to do this last step unless you just want to. All right, so last time I substituted in the negative solution, so I'll just use the positive solution this time. 
Square two, I get four. Drop that negative down, I get negative four. Plus four is zero. Those are opposites. Opposites add up to zero. Zero equals zero. Now, hopefully you remember that this one should open down because of uh, A is, le is negative there. So we get one that opens down. And you can see it crosses at negative two and it crosses at positive two. Right. 9x squared minus 16 equals zero. So again, the first thing I would do would be to transpose that negative 16 to the other side as positive 16. Divide both sides by nine. So now I have x squared equals 16 ninths. Take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And remember, if you take the square root of a fraction, you just take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So that's going to be plus or minus four thirds. Which, um, when we look at the graph, remember as a decimal, four thirds would be 1.3 repeating. So the graph doesn't show fractions, it shows decimals. So. Um, I'll put the negative root back in just because. So we have nine and then negative four thirds squared minus 16 equals zero. So that's nine square negative, you get a positive. So that's 16 ninths minus 16 equals zero. The nines reduce. So I'm left with 16 minus 16 equals zero. Zero equals zero. Again, I think there's a glare there. Don't know if that takes away the glare or not. I think it does. All right. Take my dog. All right. Graph. Again, that one's really zoomed out, so hopefully you have the slides pulled up as well. But that says negative 1.3 repeating. That says positive 1.3 repeating. One last example, we have x squared plus one equals zero. So I have x squared plus one equals zero, transpose that over, I get x squared equals negative one, take the square root of both sides, I get x equals, and we have a problem. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. So this actually means there is no solution. So for the first time, we've found a quadratic that can't be solved. Okay, now, really, this means there are no real solutions, right? Um, in fact, um, when you get into Algebra 2, you will find this has solutions that are not real. Um, can't imagine that you're this bored. I bet you are pretty bored. But in case you're curious, the actual answer to this when you get an algebra 2 is going to be x equals plus or minus i. Okay. I'm not really going to spend much more time on the video on what that means. Uh, you have YouTube, you have Google, you can look it up. But i is just an imaginary number. So it does have a solution, but we don't care about imaginary solutions. So for our purposes in Algebra 1, we just say no solution. So if that has no solution, that should mean that it does not have any x-intercepts. Okay, Because remember, x-intercepts are the same thing as the solutions. So if it doesn't have a solution, it should also never cross the x-axis which right here is the x-axis. You can see it goes up away from it and it never crosses the x-axis. Okay. Really, that's the parent function translated up one, so it never touches. All right, um, homework. Um, I am going to give you a uh, Google form just over section 9.6. So it would be the same as the homework that was um, uh, assigned 
last time, and um, I think I gave you maybe seven questions over that. A lot of you have already turned that in, so um, it's due Tuesday, today, as you're watching this. So if you don't have it turned in, get it turned in as soon as you can. Uh, when you submit an answer, only submit the number. So if you get an answer of four, don't type into your Google form X equals four, just type four. If you have multiple answers, so say you get negative four and four as your answers, um, use a comma to separate them and don't use any spaces. Okay, so negative four comma four. I'm going to try to make it be where it doesn't matter what order you put those in. Um, to be honest, I haven't made the Google form yet. So we'll see how that works. But uh, hopefully it won't matter what order you put them in. Uh, Wednesday, there won't be any video. I'll give you a um, homework assignment from section nine, seven, uh, straight from the textbook that you'll take a picture of and email or submit to Google Classroom like you've been doing. All right, that's all I got. Have a good day.